Hello and welcome to Circle Passages and Higher Ground. We're at uh, TC Media Studios in Olympia and it's August 10th, 2024. Welcome to the show and welcome Heather, co-host. And Thank actually you. you're going to be running with the ball here. Uh, Maybe, yeah. <laughs> and really talking about healing art and mm -hmm. so many aspects around that. Uh, so yeah please uh can you kind of walk us through some of what you have in mind please yeah so art um in the modern era has become what my art history professor liked to call sofa art uh -huh. art that goes with the living room and so what i'd love to touch on is what is as alex gray the visionary artist said what is the mission of art what's the power of art what's the role of art and I would suggest, or I think our theme is healing art. Mm -hmm. You know, what is the medicine of art that it is to, as Jung called it, a healing and a teaching, but it's really a transforming. Art has an initiatory power to transform us. So that's coming through the individual who's actually creating the art. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, okay, so it's coming through the individual creating the art, uh -huh. but it's also people viewing art. So again, Jung, mm. Carl Jung, the Swiss psychologist, would stare for hours at art as the only beauty he'd ever known. And he seemed to have this innate capacity to enter the image. And so I've had different friends and people tell me of experiences, and some of them were, one was mirroring ancient Egyptian art in the posture that they were holding wow. and having this whole psychic transformative experience of feeling like they were breathing with and, you know, so I think it can happen in all different ways and creating art is a powerful form of healing. Well, you were talking too about uh, Carl Jung and mm -hmm. so, you know, like looking at the consciousness and actually the subconscious, uh, of the unconscious yeah. and kind of deriving some of what you might put on canvas or you might create some art, but uh, could you talk some more about that, please? Yeah, so I think of it almost like roots of a tree into the unconscious, and it's, it's the collective unconscious. I kind of like to think of it as a super conscious because mm -hmm. I think that the major role that art takes us on is from an egocentric to an ecocentric perspective, meaning collective. And so the example I'd love to give was that when my cohort and my doctoral dissertation had gathered and we knew each other for maybe a year and a half before a new person entered and we were doodling at the beginning of class and then we shared our doodles mm -hmm. and the new person's doodle was this improbable image which was the Statue of Liberty holding a phallic baby in a lotus uh -huh. and you know go figure um, and so it turns out of course that what she was tuning into in kind of going inward and dropping into almost like that root system was a primary image that our class our cohort had been discussing which was a dream image of one of the women and wow. so there's this power, Jung called it a Promethean and precognitive Prometheus, you know, obviously mm -hmm. had foresight. So sometimes you can see things in the art that anticipate things. I've had a bunch of examples of people who, well, like one time I brought in art again in my cohort and we were sharing symbols and it had all 13 people's symbols and one other guy I didn't have his symbol in the art but I had it in art I was working with at home mm. and the crazy part is that I had started that art and done the bulk of it like seven years before and then like one other example so a friend of mine who died she this is a beautiful one with the art healing she had all these images in art of um, nests in her head with golden eggs, three golden eggs, which is this alchemical symbol. And that's where she had three inoperable brain tumors. And I have in my room one where she had a golden egg in her hand 
and this breast was exposed and she had gauze. She had gauze as kind of a symbol, almost mm. indicating wounding. Mm -hmm. And that's where I got, or it was the last place she had cancer and the place I got cancer. And I'd had a dream that if I didn't create this art and get this method of artistic creative healing out, I would die of brain. Wow. Yeah, you know, anyway, so it, so it just weaves in mm -hmm. these ways that are inexplicable consciously, above ground, so to speak. But if you take into account the superconscious, this collective unconscious root system, that's the fascinating power to me, is that art taps into the soul, I think, and soul is fractal. It's not separate. Like, my soul isn't separate from the soul in the world, and soul just means life mm -hmm. in the sense. So it brings us to life and it taps us into this whole network of life and information uh, that otherwise we, we don't know how to access. So it sounds like art can be a healing process for the artist as uh -huh. well as the viewer. Uh, uh -huh. And as from the art, artist's point of view, what, you just described something of uh, your friend and what she experienced, but doing, creating some art yourself yeah. kind of related to that. But could you talk a little bit more about that, of how you saw that as a, I mean, it's pretty obvious about it, the healing part that you don't want this to happen to you or that it's going to develop, but yeah. the healing aspect of it. Yeah, and the healing is an interesting one because Healing is holistic, so there's no guarantee of someone surviving, not surviving. And I don't even think that that is bad, as weird as that sounds from our vantage on this mm -hmm. side of the veil, so to speak. But there are all kinds of statistics that just doing art helps um, without like knowing art therapy or this art medicine or anything, mm -hmm. just doing art helps not only with um, the psychology of wellness, feeling a sense of well-being, but it helps with alleviating symptoms, it helps with improving outcomes in terms of like if you're getting surgery, if you're going through cancer. Uh -huh. So art in all these, it also really helps in terms of cognitive ability, so not getting dementia or Alzheimer's, which we have an epidemic of. Um, so just doing art in whatever way you do it is really great and has a lot of healing potential. And then there's a deeper dive to me into using art a little bit as a mirror into this collective unconscious, a soul, psych psyche, psychology is a study of soul. Mm -hmm. So this capacity to see beyond our limited separative self, our ego versus the ecosystem. And part of that is, like if you think of a tree, mother trees can communicate and send nutrients and information all over. So they have this ability to be collective. Mm -hmm. And we have that too. Um, art is ancient, and so we can tap into this way of being systemic and collective to include getting healing images. So like my friend's alchemical eggs. Uh -huh. Um, I did a retrospective of her art after she was well, before she died for her. And it was fascinating because you could see healing from all kinds of issues, not to get into her personal life, but like duct tape, you know, mm -hmm. issues of silencing, issues of like a lot of issues with almost like sewing, like a little bit like Frankenstein, you know. Mm -hmm all the wounds we have made flesh, made manifest. And this is Frida Kahlo inspired art, this one. So Frida Kahlo is a great one for the wounded healer in the mm -hmm. sense of she went through a lot of trauma. She had that horrific um, accident mm -hmm. in a bus and had a lot of physiological wounding, but then a lot of interior psychological wounding. And she painted that in a way. And part of that's cathartic, getting it out on the canvas, so to speak, or the art journal, she did that as well. But part of it is this mirroring process of once it gets out, you can see something. It can communicate with you in a way where for me, it's a back and forth of like you paint something, you realize something. Mm -hmm. And this is that, Jung called it learning and healing of art of transforming. You see something, it teaches you something. 
and you heal, and which allows you to see something more. And um, I'm going to communicate one other thing that it's hard to even kind of fathom, but also you can enter art afterwards with the act of imagination. Mm -hmm. And with me, one of the first times I did that, I actually was taken back to abuse that I experienced that was really, it was sexual abuse, it was, you know, undoubtedly traumatic. But the way that I was brought back to it in this kind of imaginal way that is like inexplicable from a rational perspective was really graceful, like full of grace. It was really transcendently beautiful. And so there's something about the creative spirit that invokes soul. Um, young soul in, in his red book, he called that process um, nature, she called it art. And I think it is both. It's second nature for us, it's art, it's healing. And we don't have to know what we're doing rationally is part of it. We're so used to, you know, like knowing where we're going. Part of this is a very much a surrender to something beyond and outside of yourself um, that, that's guiding you through the creative process. So that healing process you were just talking about, I mean, that's, that's just amazing yeah, in itself. Mm -hmm. But would you create a new uh, work, uh, some artwork kind of with that? Or would you do something to what you had already done, you know, to make some adjustments, make some changes? Uh, yeah, well, so the first, I'm going to answer that maybe in a roundabout way, but, mm -hmm. but I definitely come back to art. So Da Vinci said, art is never finished, it's only abandoned. So I am <laughs> very much about layers yeah. and keeping art alive like the healing process. You know, we're always healing, transforming, growing. Um, but so when I did my doctoral dissertation, which was art-based and art-informed, so art-based is making art, art-informed is kind of the part about communing and communicating with the art. When we started and I talked about the statue, that's mm -hmm. art-informed. That's you learning from the art once it's made. But so when I first started, I was almost like you could call it meditating with the art. It's called active imagination. Uh -huh. And you um, get into a liminal state, a state of reverie. So you kind of soften your gaze and you soften the boundaries of consciousness and that allows you to make contact or your soul through you to make contact with something, you know, je ne sais quoi, I don't know. It's, uh -huh. it's, it's there and I have all kinds of examples of people who've seen the same things on, I'm gonna call them the inner plane. So there's also some weird objective mm -hmm consensus reality there too but the first thing it had me do was create art and this is to your question of would you create new art so it it had me create art as almost like psychological healing homework and mm. it told me it's kind of the spirit i encountered in this painting <laughs> that i was mm -hmm. reflecting on said that I couldn't progress on this path, Jung called it a path, this healing, almost like art stepping stones, serious art, that I couldn't progress until I dealt with this primary wounding with the masculine, and it gave me art homework. And so often when we create art, we're just, we don't know what we're doing. Like we're confraining a blank canvas and we just go at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then this was more prescriptive in the sense of, my soul telling me not exactly what to do, but that I had to do it on X. So it's almost like getting homework on. Mm -hmm. And then, then I did it and I had this amazing, the most powerful experience of communion with the masculine and the feminine I've ever had in my life. Oh. And, and so it's, art is like almost like the epiphenomenon. It's like the medium that's allowing this to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's also a byproduct. It's not that it's not important, but the transformation, like the out, outer um, reflection of my own transformation and experience is the art, is a different way to look at it. And then th that's so incredible. I mean, there are different ways of communicating, I guess, and that's, you're certainly talking about uh, a method of communication where somebody yeah. might talk about whatever the, the healing process is, but you're actually visually following whatever guide that uh, is helping you, you know, 
Put it, put it on canvas. Put it on canvas, yeah. And one of the biggest things, in fact, people sometimes say that half of the art is confronting the blank page or the blank canvas, mm -hmm. blank whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And because, and I think this is a lot of the power of art, is we have to go up and in. You know, like we, that's again to Jung's statement that he couldn't soullessly copy something external. He had to draw from his imagination, what stirred his imagination, he said. So it's us being thrown back in upon ourselves that I think is a lot of the key of us accessing something that we don't know how to get at out there. And we spend so much of our life told like gerbils, if you have this, if you have that, and yet there's this whole power that I think is our superpower um, that is an inner threshold or door or crossing and very much we are the art, you know, and we are the artists, but we just don't know how to get to it once we get to that like 95% of artists, you know, once they're 95% in second grade identifies art, once they get to high school, 5%. And so we kind of lose our way. It's like, where was the door? I don't know. So adulthood must be just negative. <laughs> well, adult, adulthood is a remembering, yeah, a coming back. <laughs> And I do think, like, I remember when COVID hit and going to the craft store and there'd be just these epic cues. And I do mm -hmm. think we know that there's a power in creation, you know, mm -hmm. that if even if you want to look at it as we are built in the image of the creator, we are creators, we're creating our world. And then we need to take that kind of seriously. What are we creating is another kind of if this is a healing of myself, part of this is us as a species and this concept of the Anthropocene, which is the modern era that science said that they didn't buy, but social science embraces, which is that the new mm -hmm. era, this new geologic era is made in the image of humans. We are creating it. Then we need to, if it's a self-portrait of us, who do we want to be? Who are we? And that's what I think art actually does in this mirroring, in this self-portrait, is like shows you parts of yourself. And honestly, it often shows you wounds. Mm -hmm. Rumi said the wound is where the light enters. You know, honestly, art is not for the faint of heart, <laughs> but Doesn't it's totally like transformative. Mm -hmm. And this piece right here, I was just curious, uh, when when you started this, let's say, mm -hmm. and are you telling uh, Frida's story or kind of rolling some of your own experiences yeah. in what ha you've put together here? Yeah, so Frida Kahlo, for those who don't know, is a, a Mexican visionary artist, um, consort to Diego Rivera, which mm -hmm. had, he had his difficulties, and she did with him. Mm -hmm. but. <laughs> amazing artist, but the, to me, she's the preeminent wounded healer artist. And so she was alchemizing, healing her wounds in her art. So there are all kinds of images by her that have um, hearts, which is one of my favorite images, this wounded heart, and have, um, you know, she had the best injury, so she, she had to lie in bed for a long time, and that's kind of what started her on the healing journey with art. She had an art diary, like Jung, and so that's one of the reasons I love her. Um, but also the wounded feminine is, you know, in her dealings not only with the best injury, but Diego Rivera, mm -hmm. you know, dealing with the wounded feminine. So when I paint, like, this image that has a resemblance to her, she isn't her as one single individual. Mm -hmm. She's more like the creatrix, the feminine creative, this wounded healer. And so to me, sh this is almost like an icon of the wounded healer mm -hmm. and the ability to heal ourselves. Again, not where the things that are wrong with us are bad. Um, mm -hmm. Like Jung spoke of the God and the disease. Like, what is the disease showing you? How can you transform through this? Mm -hmm. So she had some really hard things happen to her, and they made her who she was. And so for me, that's part of the imagery of this, is the symbolism of, you know, how do we transform? Like my mom, one of her friends had a saying, bloom where you're planted. 
you know, how do we mm -hmm. take the fertilizer, kind of the shit mm -hmm. of our life, you know, and, and grow from it. And she was just a beautiful, and to me is kind of the preeminent example of that as a wounded healer. Sure, seems like it. And I mean, there's so much really going on here because uh, of just seeing wings mm -hmm. uh, and butterfly wings, perhaps, but wings, uh, so uh -huh. kind of what, taking flight from some of what's going on or? Yeah, so she has a quote that's essentially like, why do I need feet when I have wings to fly. Um, she also had a really fun one. Um, I used to drown my sorrows like an alcohol until the damn things learned how to swim. <laughs> and I paint my reality. So, sh you know, there she has mm. a lot of quotes. But, yeah, how do you metamorphosize? How do you transform through the cocoon that is, you know, the life we're born into? And that's part of this, again, from the ego center the separate self to the mm -hmm. eco center this collected to me is that you know the wings of the butterfly um, and one of the things I did want to bring in is that art is ancient you know it's embodied it's in our blood our bones um, they have homo naledi from over 241,000 years ago a earlier um, pre-homo sapien and they're they have burial ritual art and so this practice of using art as this transformative mechanism, this healing modality, is ancient. And it's embodied, and so there is something feminine to it also. Like, she is an image of it, and there's something feminine. Like, Jung calls it the maternally creative. You know, this um, be partly because it's embodied, partly because it's in the right hemisphere, which is connected more to a body and a body of art. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so she has wings, a luna moth too, because yeah. there's something about the dark night of the soul and going through hardship that transforms us. Um, we can't just hide in the light all the time. We have to go through the darkness and go through the hard parts of ourselves, the shadow work. And it sounds like the pain of you know the, the recovery pain. from mm -hmm. uh, the injuries that she had. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm sure you, let me get through this, uh, get out of this darkness, but at the same time, really to yeah embrace it, I suppose. And, and collective pain. So part of it, like her mm -hmm. her sister slept with Diego Rivera, who mm -hmm. you know. So she had inner pain, outer pain. We have collective pain. Oh. I remember as a child getting to a point where. In high school, I felt like I could contact and then not differentiate very well with like these almost crevasses of collective pain. And so part of it as an artist is you are merging into that collective field. And then that's part of why the crucifixion of the artist is you do have to learn how to contain yourself mm -hmm. so that you don't get lost in that. Um, and that's part of what with the Soul of Creativity offerings that I do. Part of it is containment because there is a lot of suffering. We are transforming not only ourselves, but like our species and our planet, recreating ourselves on all those different levels and layers. But you have to be able to differentiate so you don't like drown in the pain of not only yourself, but you know the collective, even transcending species and ancestral pain and you know all of these ways that we can heal are also ways that we need to learn to differentiate ourselves. All sounds like it's pretty tricky business of uh, <laughs> making these transitions and it is and it's not because it's ancient like again mm. you know that homo mm -hmm. naledi the the ritual burial like we have hundreds of thousands of years of practice with these, you know, with this ancient way of being with not only visionary art, painting these inner visions as a stepping stone, what you call the path mm -hmm. of transformation. We know this. Um, the written word is so recent, and we are so irrational um, that we do know how to do this. We just have to almost forget what we're conditioned, mm -hmm. you know, that um, not only the Bible's commandment, no graven images, but we are through school, we're taught, you know, reading and writing and all these things. Art with my children was eliminated, like they had no art. You know, and so it's not 
there's something purposeful about taking away this way to create ourselves in our own image. And the world is trying to, you know, consciously and unconsciously create, not automatons, but, you know, functional adults. But that does a disservice to us. And Jung would say that he said that there's an artist in it hiding in everyone. The artist needed to be resurrected because the psychic ills of our day can largely be put on the fact that this creative capacity is buried. And I think that's the dis-ease, you know, that part of us knows there's a different way of being. I've taught so many art classes, and it's crazy how fast people just like remember once they kind of turn off their like whatever self-doubt mm -hmm. talk, you know, they dive right in. Which is incredible uh, yeah. in itself to be able to reach back and pull that to the surface. Yeah, and um, you know, not to be the dead horse of the many uh, capacities of art and healing, but art, because we have such a long history that's pre-verbal, um, and consciousness is just this veneer, you know, 5% conscious in terms of our thoughts, feelings, and actions. Um, art accesses, and now they have all these evidence-based studies, art accesses core wounds and complexes and parts of ourselves that words literally can't get to. And, you know, you have your drum. There are all these ways in which we can return to past ways of being, like drumming, uh, dancing is the most healing modality. That's mm -hmm. because these are ancient. A lot of people would say, I don't know how to dance. And it's like, you absolutely know how to dance. You know, same with art. You absolutely know how to create something. Mm -hmm. We're just conditioned not to. Sadly. Uh, Sadly. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Or find other ways, and I know I do that personally, uh, to create something on canvas or on paper is a real struggle, mm -hmm. but uh, to kind of utilize some other, whatever, mediums, uh, that makes it a little bit easier yeah. for me to be able to do that. The creation is, is kind of there, but I, I need to find another way to kind of let it out. And yeah, and one of the things that Jung said that's important that is just archetypally true. So this is an archetypal, which means universal process. Um, art and then the way that he worked with it and it's that symbolism emerges in us and through us and it doesn't have to be like this like it can take any form and one of them obviously was the mandala so a sacred circle and so he found that in times of outer chaos and disintegration the integration the order of the mandala would come through more and more when people felt disorganized and disintegrated and so if you just start, and almost like a lot of activities, you close your eyes, or it's almost like warming up in athletics. You mm -hmm. just like kind of loosen up and mm -hmm. like, OK, let go of whatever your preconceived notion is. Um, blind contours, but they just make you start. And so then you can just follow the line. And for me, I often ask, and I even have like on the back here, um, writing. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll stop and I'll get partway through and I'll be like, um, and this is an image actually of the time, the age around which I was when I had experienced the sexual abuse. So it's kind of a healing image for that. But I went and I, my friend Stephanie was one of the first people that I saw wrote on the back like that. Uh -huh. And so I started, you know, would work a little bit on the image and then do automatic writing or a dialogue. Active imagination is partly where you dialogue with your soul or you dialogue with an image and you can ask, you know, what would you like to tell me or, or what does this mean? Or you, you become more adept at it and then it becomes more automatic. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, just so the camera can oh, pick yeah. up? Uh, mm -hmm. And in, in, in the, the front part, too. And actually, I just noticed that back here is uh, Black Widow Spider. Oh, yeah. So kind of curious. OK, uh, so Black Widow Spider and um, uh, White also. So oh, yes. when I was uh -huh. doing this, there was a giant white spider on my door. And so I put that in. And I've also, Spider Woman was the major goddess at Teotihuacan, where I'm uh -huh. you know, going to Mexico. I'm super excited. Um, 
but this web, you know, you can see a web in here, and how do we reweave the web when it's torn? You know, it's an image of a mandala, if you will, like a sacred circle that has spokes, that has a center. Um, I was just at a, a retreat this last weekend where I was a forest bathing retreat, and we're supposed to go out and find something in motion, and I found a spider, so I watched it spiral out like so you know but so it's this sacred geometry of how do you create order out of chaos how do you heal a wound you know um especially wounds like sexual abuse which is so common but we don't talk about has a lot of psychic fragmentation mm -hmm. so art is a way and i did it in dance a lot too where you visions come through and then you can be like you integrate parts of the vision, like whether it's a spider and this web that emerged, or um, you know whether it's a triangle or whether it's a, you know whatever it is. And it could be you look through the lens of your art at the world and you see what what comes to you, mm -hmm. like around the time period that you're creating this. And then you may create and add more things later based on what you experience. You know, our healing isn't done. So we'll, you know, it could be that there's a whole nother layer that happens. Actually, I'm just picking this up because it, it just, what, when you had it up in a moment ago, is kind of like what's going on right here, the, the internal healing. I, yeah. But I don't know if that's... Well, that's actually a really cool part, Buck. So part of this is that you're telling your story. And remembering your story, rewriting your story is another form of art and art healing. And so when I was this age, there was an image that I painted, a photograph that I painted this from, where I was holding this little bouquet of wildflowers. And the Persephone myth, which is the major abduction myth, she was not even named Persephone, she was Corey Maiden. She was abducted by Hades into the underworld, and a lot of times that's used as a a metaphor for rape, you know, kind of you're abducting into the underworld, like when I got cancer, something happens mm -hmm. and you're like drawn into kind of the abyss mm -hmm. of the underworld. And yet the underworld, Hades, another appellation or name is the Lord of Riches. So what can we mine, how can we mine gold there? Like what is the buried treasure? So Persephone was literally picking wildflowers when she was abducted and then here was this image of me and I always, growing up, I always knew that there was an innocence looking out of my eyes that was pre that experience. So this photograph that I used for this was just this model that the eyes always beseeched or called to me. And so that flower bouquet that actually was from a photograph was also this kind of mythic correspondence, or you can call it amplification, where stories, life experiences, synchronicities, all these things weave into your healing. So this, this is almost like a box where you're collecting images and integrating them together. Mm -hmm. And then as that happens, you look at it and you mirror, and I call it communing and communicating, and then you'll see something else and you'll respond. But that's also an archetypal story, that myth of my life with this, you know, wildflower bouquet, Persephone, mm -hmm. is abducted, and that's actually how she's initiated. Could you hold that up one more time? Of course, let, yeah. let, let everybody out there see, because <laughs> okay. uh, this is uh, yeah. just what you're explaining, and, and you start seeing a lot of what you're, you're talking about. Uh, yeah. Just incredible, and just seeing this, too, with hummingbirds. Uh, yeah, so one of the things, too, that's a mythic story is that hummingbird's daughter is a healer. So that archetypal healer is often a hummingbird's daughter. There's a flower, so obviously you have the flowers here, and then you have a, a mm -hmm. flower motif here. And you can see that there's, there's a bit of a Vesica Pisces or like a Yoni, a sacred feminine. There's a heart here. And then there's weaving taking place, and then it becomes this kind of ordered mandala of integration from the chaos. And a black and white spider, you know, mm -hmm. are kind of the dark and the light that we need both. Um, we need, honestly, the, the chaos and the disorder evolves us. That concept that Jung had of the God and the disease, that our abduction into the underworld, and I'm not like validating sexual abuse. We seriously need to work on it as a species. But 
we need to heal. And to do that often, we need to go into the unconscious, which is another way of looking at the underworld. How do we go into the unconscious, which is where art leads us? Art is the psychopomper guide to bring back treasures. And again, like when I went into the sexual abuse in that art that I didn't bring um, and had that conjunctio, this kind of transcendent experience of the masculine and the feminine, that was um, going into this really, you know, you could say the most horrific time of my life, but in this way that literally it was in, I was in this um, apple tree fort that I had as a child around the same time above this garden. So it was almost like this Edenic return to the Garden of Eden with, I mean, it just was so fraught with symbolism. And then what the art helps me do too is almost like a, a memory anchor. And it literally is a memory anchor for us. We remember way more and we integrate way more when we do it. But it's a way for me to be like, oh, I had this experience. I'm going to weave it in. I had this experience. I'm going to weave it in. And find where it fits. Like, what, how does this fit in my story? Mm -hmm. And that's what's just incredible about this piece right here is all of the integration, the different aspects, different pieces, and how you've been able to pull all that together and kind of, in a way, layers of uh, mm -hmm. the healing process. Uh, yeah, and it is layers. Sometimes I call it like a palimpsest, where it has almost like you're excavating layers down. But I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I have my little, look, we have so many prom, <laughs> props. But so a mandala, and so it's flat, it's two-dimensional, but it's really multi-dimensional, and you enter into it. Um, this is a Buddhist image. But it's the same sense, like we're not used to applying the concept to Western art, mm -hmm. but you enter into the image. Um, and that there are, there's symbolism, there's an orientation, there's an excavation, there's a path, all of, there's a teaching, all of this, but you have to enter into it. And part of it is you almost have to surrender at the door your not your mentality, like not lose your mind, but mm -hmm. you know, set your mind that has to be rational and I don't know what's happening and might panic. Just, you know, give them some play toy and set them aside for a second. And then honestly, you enter into a different way of knowing that is crazy transformative and you can access information that I literally think you can't access any other way. It's, it's really fascinating. What a journey. Yeah. What a journey. And I was just thinking as you're describing that of Jung or in any therapeutic uh, process or situation. Yeah. Time of discovering these things, self-discovery. I mean, that's, it could be a long time. It could be uh, who knows what, but uh, just amazing. Yeah. And supposedly all art, they say, is a self-portrait. Da Vinci carried around his art for a really long time. It was notorious for not finishing it. But part of it is that it's how we're working on ourselves. It's our medicine. And so um, part of it is in our fast paced world, like doing a drum or doing, some, doing something where you lose track of time. Like that's mm -hmm. one of the keys. Mihai Sin Min Hai, or however you pronounce his name, but with that flow state, you go into a flow state and that itself is therapeutic. Um, but you, that's what creativity does. It takes you out of the normal space-time relationship into what I call quantum creativity. But it's just it's a different relationship with space and time. And we can all access it. We just kind of have forgotten how because we've forgotten that we're artists. Sadly. Yeah. But you've given us uh, <laughs> so much today to uh, tap into that, each one yeah. of us, those who, of us who uh, might struggle with that. So certainly thank you for that. And uh, yeah. thank the crew that's uh, here today, because oh, uh, yeah. uh, without them, this wouldn't be happening, right? Mm -hmm. but, uh, but thank you so much. I mean, so rich with, uh, wow, personal experience as well as what we can all use, I think, uh, and yeah. seek out. And that we're all artists, you know, because I know yeah. back from the very beginning, I recognize that you got that, you know, the power of healing art. 
And, and a lot of people think of it as not evidence-based, as woo-woo, but now the beauty is there's so much evidence, so many studies that validate it. And so hopefully people will, you know, get out their art supplies and get into their own, you know, hearts and minds and There's the invitation, heal. yes. There's the invitation, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Thank you for uh, tuning in, and uh, we'll uh, see you next show. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there were a couple of times where I was like, did I say that the first time or the second time? <laughs> there were yeah. a couple of things I was hoping you were going to say again. Oh, I couldn't.